yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta, yeah, you gotta, you know, you gotta fit in. American Horror Story is verifiably American horror and a story. American Horror Story is a convergence of creepy subplots. American Horror Story is horrorific. Ah, oh, boy. What a great start. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Falling Towers. Watch the first podcast, podcast in which we watch the first episode of a series so that you don't have to. Of course, we are opening up on Horror Month. October is Horror Month. We're doing American Horror Story, episode one, entitled Pilot. Very clever. Uh, and uh, we have our very special guest co-host again. Of course, Dr. Muhammad Noor is here. Hello. Always a pleasure to be on Falling Towers. Watch the first. And a very special guest. We are super excited about this. Beside ourselves, Neil Patrick Stevens is here. Writer, director, actor, producer, horror aficionado. Do it all, baby. <laughs> Multi-talented. He bad no Celtics I, fan. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, yeah. <laughs> He's a true Celtics fan. Not one of you Johnny come latelys, you know. And he's got Oh my god, what a great start. A garbage pail kids mug? Uh yeah, yeah. Uh Yeah, it's uh I was a big me and my sister were big fans when we were kids and uh she sent me this I think for oh my, my birthday here. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Remember those? Uh, I loved them. Oh, I'm yeah. a huge fan of those as well. In fact, that's really cool. In fact, we need everybody to know here that Neil, this is your garbage pail kid. <laughs> Nervous. Oh my god. Neil. <laughs> Nervous oh my god. Neil. You have no idea how accurate that actually really is. Oh. Can I can, can I tell a little story actually? Please. Uh, so oh wait, I, everybody at home, you know we're doing American Horror Story entitled Pilot. Let's watch the first podcast. If you want us to watch the first episode of a horror series, in the comments below, type WTF and whatever the horror series is. That stands for Watch the First, and we will do it. Maybe. So, uh, what's your story, Neil? Let's hear it. Oh, well, it's it's, a, it's not a long story, but uh, I was uh, when I was in high school. People thought it'd be like funny, a joke, to vote me to be the the prom host, uh, even though I was like not like the prom host material, you know, outgoing, <laughs> material. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, whatever, cool, suave. And they're like, let's let's just uh, have Neil do it. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, uh, I don't, like, I don't know. What are the responses? What do I got to do? Blah blah blah. So they voted, and there was this big campaign in my school to vote me as prom host as a joke. And then I won to be the prom host. And then I act. The problem was I had to actually go to the prom and like find a date, which I was not. You know, again, I was not as cool as as I am now. Uh, uh, oh, so I, I was like, I was nervous, Neil. Uh, <laughs> trying to find someone because i i had to i had to go i had to find someone uh so i was like the, actually that was very accurate uh unfortunately this one girl felt bad for me who i worked <laughs> with she's like look if you can't find anyone to go with you I'll, I'll stand there next to you for a few hours uh just so you got someone to go with so she hooked me up at the end what a sweetie what was her uh, name shout out to her uh oh sh this is a long time ago i think lauren something I was like, we don't need last names. Yeah. 16, <laughs> yeah. 16. This is a long time ago, but cool. good, good gal. Good gal. And nervous Neil got a, got a date to the prom. Finally. Thank goodness. Nice. That there's a good happy ending, ending like here. That. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking for a like garbage, garbage kid. pill kid guy. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right. Right. Uh, no, never mind. Go there's ahead. gotta be a WTF. <laughs> there's, there's gotta be a, a garbage pail kids show. Man, I would watch the heck out of that. They had the movie way back in the 80s. Anyway, today we are kicking off Horror Month. So let's do it, everybody. Muhammad, where are we starting with this? How do, how do we start this thing? So, you know, people in horror movies are often put into predicaments. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Muhammad and I have known each other for a few years. Neil and I have known each other for 
goodness gracious, it's probably double digits by now. Uh, we've known each other for what, eight, 10, 12 years? I don't even know. But, uh, and Muhammad and Neil know, have known each other for nine months mm -hmm. yeah. since they had done, uh, what was the first one we did together? Twilight Zone. Twilight, Twilight Zone. Zone. Ooh, Neil's a big Twilight Zone fan. So everybody at home, check that out. If you want to see Neil and Muhammad and myself doing Twilight Zone, that is WTF number 92. And it's the original, like 1959 or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so we're going to predict if the other person liked this show. Muhammad, I predict that you did like this. I'm not sure if you're much of a horror guy. I feel like you're kind of not. You're a little bit more lighthearted. But I think that you still can enjoy it. You know, you don't like hate horror. You're not one of those people that just doesn't want to see gore or horror or suspenseful things. Um, so I think you did enjoy this moderately. Neil, I think you like this more than moderately because this show is all the rage. I think they've done like 10 seasons or something like that. You are totally a horror guy. You make horror films. We'll talk more about that a little later. Um, so, yeah, I think you're going to like this pretty high, pretty high for you. What do you think, Muhammad? So I'm going to echo Ryan's that I think Neil looked like this a lot. I'm guessing that probably, you know, maybe around eight or higher, even potentially. So I, th I think you're going to be quite positive on it overall. But I, on the other hand, you're coming with an expert opinion. So you may be like, oh, too many of the, the trite, you know, this thing always happens kinds of things. But I guess as you'll see past that. Ryan, actually, this one's harder. I don't think we've ever talked about horror, as, as you were alluding to. I'll guess, I think I'll, I think I'll be optimistic too. I think maybe you'll like it too, but maybe more in the six and a half to seven range or something like that. What do you think, Neil? Uh, I'm going to guess Ryan doesn't like it just because I feel like you don't like anything and we've been on <laughs> the we've reviewed. Hey. <laughs> no, that's not true. There was actually there was one uh, one of the ones you really liked. But this one I'm going to yeah, I'm going to I'm going to say you were probably critical of this show. Uh Muhammad, you look so jovial today. Uh you look glowing. Um I I feel like you I feel like you like this. I feel like uh you enjoyed this. I, I don't know what score you're going to give it, but I I I'm going to I'm going to guess, or maybe you're just in a good mood. Maybe you're you just been having a good day. Uh, that, that could be it too. But um, hanging out with cool people. What else could you do? <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say you liked it. I'm going to go on the limb. I think you liked it. All right. Everybody at home, uh, by the way, I'm wearing a cool House of a Thousand oh. Corpses shirt to oh. kick off Horror Month. Uh, sponsored Darth? by Darth Shuey. Yeah. Oh. That guy gets me. He knows what to get for me. If he got me some dumb shirt, I wouldn't be wearing it probably. But this one, I definitely will wear. Um, all right. So, everybody at home, make your predictions. Do you think I like this show? Do you think, yeah, you think Muhammad probably liked it. But did you, did you really think he did? You know, because we've gotten some hints. What about Neil? Do you think he likes it? He's a big horror fan. But like Muhammad said... Maybe that means he's hypercritical about horror, the horror genre. So make your predictions in the live chat or in the comments below. And while you're doing that, Muhammad's going to buy you a little bit of time by telling you, us all what this show is even a boot. I will indeed. So following a tragic miscarriage and a blatant affair, the Harmon family seeks a new start in a 1920s era home. They learn that the previous residents died in a murder-suicide. But the viewers are shown that was just the tip of the iceberg of the alarming history of the house. The dad in the family is a psychiatrist who treats potentially dangerous youth. And one of his subjects starts spending time with his daughter, Violet, and helps her deal with bullies. We also meet the neighbors and an age-shifting housekeeper lady as creepy plots involving all of these people develop throughout the episode. See you guys. You're hooked now. Uh, Neil really appreciated it when I said a boot. All these thoughts <laughs> swirled in his head. He's like, did he say that just for me? Does he know that I say a boat, not a boot? Is he trying to... All of the above. Who knows? All right. So Neil, by the way, everybody, is from Boston area. So shout out oh. to Boston, everybody. Uh, they don't have that accent, though, anymore. Well, as Ryan likes to point out, I haven't ditched the Canadian... Uh... <laughs> 
Yeah, you, you know, I, 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 I pronounce my, my R's, but I, I, uh, yeah, my OU's can go into weird places. Uh, still. When you go back to Boston to visit friends and family, do, do you lean back into the accent? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you just you did right it. there. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta, yeah, you gotta, you know, you gotta fit in. You mm. gotta fit in. It all comes back to you. Yeah. All right. So, um, those are our predictions. Those are your predictions, and that's what this show is about. Now we're going to compare and contrast what we expected before we watched this first episode with what we actually got, right, Muhammad? That is correct. We will have an expect and then a getchen of what we actually got. <laughs> Neil's like, what's happening? <laughs> but we get it. All right. So, uh, Muhammad, before you watch this first episode of American Horror Story entitled Pilot, just like name. 75% of the first episodes. You know, it really stands out when somebody actually comes up with a cool or clever first name, you know, for first episode. Because Pilot is just like, come on, guys, grow up. It's like Dungeons anyway. and Dragons last week, they did. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what did you expect, if anything, before you watched this first episode, Muhammad? Absolutely nothing. I didn't know anything about this. If somebody told me there was no show called American Horror Story, I would have believed them. <laughs> I had no wow. idea going in. I mean, I, I guessed from the name that it was horror and it was set in America. But, you know, I wouldn't have even known time frame. Is this something set in like, you know, the 1800s or set today or anything about the plot? No, I really knew absolutely nothing going in whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Tabula rasa. Uh, what about Neil? Before you watch this first episode, what did you expect, if anything? Uh, yeah, I mean, I... Uh... You know, I'm I, I do horror stuff, horror movies. So you know, I I was aware of the show. I uh, I hadn't seen it, or am I not supposed to say that yet? No, go ahead. Okay. I, so I, I yeah, I hadn't seen it. So also tab a bit of a tabula rasa myself. Uh, but you know, I mean, I could surmise kind of what I I thought. You know, obviously these are going to be American stories, <laughs> and uh probably involve houses that have been haunted at some point um and maybe there's going to be different different ones every season whatever uh so yeah i figured uh you know probably some classic haunted house motifs uh but also it's on uh, it's on fx right it's yeah. on um cable so i expect it won't be too raunchy bloody uh, you got to keep it within the confines of sensors. So I figured, you know, so you probably can't push it too far. Yeah. But that's what I expected. I thought it was AMC. Was it not AMC? Yeah, or are they the same the thing? Premiere. I don't know. I, I, I saw on Wikipedia that they actually had the best series premiere by viewership for the entire network was this show. So anyway, so I'll tell you what I expected, if anything. Um and I'm surprised you had not seen this, Neil. I thought that you had, and I expected that you had. Um, so that's what I expected for Neil. What I what I expected for myself was uh, I had not seen this at all, but I was very aware of it. You know, I feel like they have you know advertisements you know for it on like bus stops and billboards. You know, I I see it. You know, when they have like new season like i think they they said there's something like they're doing like the new season it's like the 10th season and there's like a clown licking an alien or something there's like two different genres and one thing is licking the other i feel like that's the image i've seen for the new and 10th season like a clown licking an alien or something like that people that know what i'm talking about know what i'm talking about <clears throat> the clowns from outer um, space yeah i don't know i mean you know i'll, I'll find it or something but other than that, and and I think I think I had heard that every season is, is like a different story, but with the same actors. Oh. Like they have, so so yeah. So season two is going to be a different horror story, but the same actors playing different roles. I think that's what I heard. I could be wrong. Right now, people that are watching this are like, "You're butchering all of this, Ryan. You got to move <laughs> on. You're wrong about everything." But I think so. I didn't uh, see on IMDb the actors have multiple names associated with them, so maybe. So that confirms it possibly. 
Um, that's about it. I knew that it was highly acclaimed. So I expected to enjoy this. I expected that it would be probably pretty good. And so I would enjoy it. But that's what we expected. What did we actually get, Muhammad, upon viewing this first episode? I mean, it comes back to the thing I said at the very beginning. It was definitely a convergence of creepy subplots. I mean, I struggled, honestly. I mean, I think it's not so much I, I, I could respect it for its quality. I don't love violence and gore and things like that. I remember at one point, I think it was about 20 minutes before the end of the episode, I was like, I think I'm just going to turn this off. And I was like, oh, shoot, I'm doing a show. No, you're not allowed. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, so I guess I'm locked in. Okay, I'll keep watching this. <laughs> but to be clear, that's not a comment on his quality. It's just I, that type of thing is not something that's appealing to me. I get that, you know, that, that some people love that and I can respect that. <laughs> but it's just not something that appealed to me. In terms of plot, I thought the plot was interesting. There was there was very much a good origin story, very much a good development. You know, we had the initial piece. I got a little confused in the beginning with the the affair scene because there was, I mean, there was the there was the very very beginning. Scene. I'm sorry, I'm going a little bit too into, too much into detail. And in, in the very very beginning, there was the scene with the two boys that we have here. You know, going in and, they, and then getting killed. And then all of a sudden there was this lady in, in the hospital having some sort of problem. And then she's coming home and she's like slices her, her husband because he's having an affair. But then they're, then she, they're showing up this house. I'm like, is this before or is this after what? I mean, I eventually got it, but I, I was a little confused what was happening after that. Like there, there was, you know, solid plot development with interesting things, but there are elements of it that I respect. And we can get back to it in more detail. Elements I respect, but oh yeah, I, st I still struggled getting through it. Okay. Uh, real quick, everybody, this is the image that I saw. I just Googled American Horror Story Season <laughs> Alien 10. Wow. Yeah. See, look how close I was. I told you it's like a the, the, the white face has got to be, you know, what I thought was. a. Uh, anyway, I just saw the imagery and I remembered that then it's and it is season 10. And there's some alien licking a clown or an alien. I don't know what's going on there. But anyway. <laughs> A vampire, maybe? Alien yeah. looking a vampire? Yeah, certainly not a clown, but I just remembered, you know, that there was something weird going on. Anyway, Neil, upon viewing this first episode, what did you actually get? Uh, well, it was a haunted house uh, story, so I I kind of expected that. Uh, it, it was, yeah, there were supernatural elements. It wasn't too violent although i i do horror so I, i'm maybe i have more of a tolerance for that than you muhammad uh Fair. <laughs> so i it didn't it wasn't you know compared to well ryan's got a rob zombie uh shirt i mean that's extremely gory uh gory type movie so we weren't getting like rob zombie level gore but we were getting you know a, a little bit it was actually a little bit raunchier than i thought yeah. it would be you know it was some sexual situations there was even some nudity uh male nudity uh i think dylan mcdermott gets naked in there oh by the way uh my my, my wife walked in while i was watching it and she looked <laughs> at the screen she was like it's ryan and and i and i looked and i was like like you actually do look if you grew some facial hair you you do look a lot like dylan mcdermott has anyone ever told you that um that? yes i'd heard in the past that when <laughs> i used to work in restaurants people would be like hey you look like dylan but they they people say that about everything they're like you look like west bentley you look like dylan mcdermott you oh, look like oh, paul look ryan like you look like everybody wants to tell you you look <laughs> like something you do oh my god you look at like all those <laughs> but i didn't know that was dylan mcdermott i just knew that there was an actor i'd seen before but i didn't know who it was but anyway yeah uh did was that it for you neil uh yeah yeah i mean you know it was uh yeah haunted house thing i expected that i was pleasantly uh uh surprised with the there was a song at the beginning by this group called patience and prudence uh they were like these, these like kids who made music in the 50s and they made these incredible songs was that the one and that I, was like stop she like turned it off uh it was it was when the kids are coming in in your little photo behind you mm, they're coming okay. in here this and tonight you belong to me so a little story. I I I love their music, and it's it's a little like spooky. It's it's beautiful, but it's spooky. And I asked them if I could use one of their songs in one of my movies, and they were like, "Yeah, we're not like we're tired of people asking us to put our songs in their really? horror movies." 
because they made these you know very beautiful kids songs that i don't like they do have an eerie quality to them and i don't i don't think it's a bad thing i think it's an awesome thing uh but i, I think they got you know they maybe weren't weren't happy about this presentation or maybe not maybe i'm getting yeah, you know i don't know but anyway mm. yeah that's really good stuff that's a little behind the scenes goodies Ooh. right there <clears throat> yeah all right so i'll tell you what i actually got upon uh viewing this first episode of american horror story i got something where it was kind of a mixed bag for me i definitely had some things that i did not like and that I did not like because I didn't because I thought it was not good. Mm. I was like, this is not this is low quality to me, or this is is this diminishes for me. But overall, what I got was something uh fun and interesting with a lot of fun and interesting concepts. And you know, I expect I I basically got about what I expected, maybe a little bit worse than what I expected. But I can see why it does have a following already based on the first episode. I can see, you know, because it's it's creepy, but it's also interesting. It's not wasn't very gory. I didn't think at all. Like, what gore was there? A dying opossum? I don't know. There was a scratch on a face. Tolerance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. So it certainly isn't like gore porn. It's more like it's a story. It's it's a creepy story. It's it's like uh it's like campfire stories, ghost stories kind of stuff, but stretched way out into clearly apparently into an entire season. So yeah, overall I got something that turned out to be pretty good. Um uh, yeah. edit what I say. It wasn't so much the gore, it's just it, I found it disturbing. Maybe that's a better way of putting it. I found many parts of it just disturbing. Like I don't I don't like how this is making me feel. <laughs> Yeah, like school school shooting. Yeah, like, that I wonder really, if in 2022 that you can like have that like plot line in there. Like you know, maybe 10 years. Like, but nowadays, like I, I that's that's mm -hmm. that might be questionable if you can. And how the like, the psychiatrist you know. took it so nonchalantly <laughs> at first, very nonchalant, and then yeah. flips in an instant. Like I think that was one of my biggest qualms with the show is that. A lot of stuff just did not make sense. And I don't mean like didn't make sense like, oh, it will later. A lot of stuff kind of didn't make like, you know, Neil would, you know, with the, the school shooting thing, psychiatrist mm -hmm. was just taking it super chill, no big deal. And then all Too of a chill. sudden flips and starts calling 911 out of nowhere. What? I, I don't get it. Was that, was that after he saw him with, the, with his daughter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like it became. I was that was the that was the flip. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then and then like they're they're like not even helpful. He's like saying, you know, we have a school school shooter in them, and and like nobody cared. But you know, this was 10, 11, 12 years ago, whatever it was. They so had it school was, shootings back then too. There were school shootings, but it's I I think it's become so. It's there are just so many now that it's just you know I I, I don't know I, I guess it depends on how it was back then, but it just seems like it's just gotten a lot worse and it's just a subject that's a little bit maybe touchier to to talk about yeah it was I, I, oh sorry no no go ahead so i really didn't like the relationship between ben and vivian too like he was clearly like constantly trying to like seduce his wife and she clearly was not into it and and his response was never like let's sit down and talk about this it's always like i'm gonna come and rub up against you now and like why would you think this is different than that? like you're just being weird guy that 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 relationship with the wife and husband, I, I found that very toxic. I wouldn't say I found it unrealistic, but I just found it like annoying. <laughs> I mean, I would have yeah. gotten the impression that over the past 10 months or whatever they said it was, that they did have those sit down talks. Yeah. And that that's how they decided to stay together and that yeah. they did hash everything out and iron everything out. And then yeah. the final decision was, OK, we're going to stay together, mm -hmm. but from the lady's point of view, but things are not how they were. Maybe they will be someday, but they're not now. And 10 months later, you know, they're still not. And he's, he's understandably frustrated and she's understandably like tough shit. Yeah, I agree <laughs> with that. But I feel like the issue was basically that, that he was pissed that he hadn't had sex in that long. It seems like you could have a conversation about this too, instead of just constantly like, I'm going to sl slip up there. I'm going to put my arm around her and then today will be the day. Like, Dude, talk it out, man. <laughs> He's I mean, definitely yeah. being presented as the most unreasonable character, I think. Very much it, so. it seems. I mean, 
you know you pissed about the dog too like what really and she hitting a lamp like he actually did get violent if you'll notice he did like a lot of people would have walked out right then and been like okay oh, you're you're breaking yeah. lamps and stuff <laughs> yeah. not only what is it a no today but i need to rethink this whole situation yeah 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 neil's been known to break a bunch of lamps though but what did you think of that scene uh well those lamps were broken uh when i got them uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I I assume we're gonna see a dark turn, <clears throat> darker turn from him as the story goes along. And you know, I mean, it is horror, so there's gonna be horror is kind of all about people who aren't communicating properly. Uh, it's it's <laughs> totally. kind of all about just bad communication and repressing things and suppressing them and not having the the conversations you know you're you're supposed to. Uh, so I assume we're going to see more of that. And I, yeah, he's, you know, I, he's definitely starting off on kind of a, uh, you know, a, a tough foot where he's kind of like, well, we've going through this together. And, uh, even though he was kind of the one who did it and, uh, yeah. What, what else did he say? He's like, why are you doing this to me? Me? You know, he's, it sound a little, exactly. uh, yeah, like a, a little self-centered there, which I, it seemed to be maybe the angle they were playing. But at the same time, you know, I mean, they're they're he's not completely unsympathetic. I mean, because otherwise, you probably wouldn't really believe him as a character. I mean, you know, he, clearly he's troubled and he's going through stuff, and I, I assume it's just going to get <clears throat> get worse for him from here on out. Well, I did feel like <laughs> most of the characters were borderline unrealistic and into the unrealistic. And realm. extreme, yeah. like the like fact Constance. that the lady, the very next day, the, the the very next, like later on in in the same day, uh, Vivian, I think her name is, yeah. she's ready to hump again, and he's up in some suit. First of all, I didn't even. I'm like, is that even him? I don't know. It might be the creepy burn guy. It might be the the tooth it guy. Seem like it was him because he he was down there with Constance downstairs, right? So but of course, was, yeah. they can throw time for a loop. You never know. I that mean, it true. could be like that could have been an hour later. But that was my that's assumption. True. Was I'm like, I don't even think that's the same guy. But on top of that, like that woman, Vivian. I was so immediately grossed out. They found somebody's sex gear that was up in that closet or something or attic. attic. And then she, in her mind, her husband is putting on that thing with all their leftover soilage and juices. And first of all, she's <laughs> not grossed out by him. Like, what the hell do you think you're doing? That is disgusting. But on top of that, she's like, oh, yeah, I'm all about it. I want that soilage all over me, too. Ah, oh, that was vomitous. Soilage. That was the grossest thing. That's not believable to me. Yeah. All of them were extreme. Oh, sorry. I'm, oh, okay. uh, oh, yeah. When did it when was it put in there? Did it was it in there when they when they sold the house? It seems like a strange thing. Or, or did it suddenly somebody place it there to, you know, I don't know. I can't imagine like, what that thing smelled like, dude. Barf. It was interesting the theme with her they kept on bringing back was this whole like natural living like I don't want I, you know I want everything to be organic and stuff like that that was an interesting weird theme with her I wasn't quite sure where that was going the whole time Constance was also over the top of the neighbor lady I mean she was so like extremely racist like talking about Dora saying oh they're all brown you won't know the difference like oh my god really okay. <laughs> I was so over the top and calling her her, her poor kid who has Downs calling him mongoloid like okay yeah. And yeah, this is all mongoloid like in like a, is a real thing, and that's not what that is. Mongoloid yeah. just means somebody from basically the Asian continent, right? Yeah, but this was all like within like under a minute. Like, okay, you're really pushing that this person is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> it was like very hard as much. Okay, we got it. <laughs> right. Well, so another thing is, is character. how many times are they going to be able to use the the idea that somebody just walked into their house? Like, how... <laughs> It was like Seinfeld. It was like, it was like constant. It was like a it was like a conga line in their freaking house. <laughs> Every three minutes, somebody wanders into their house when they're there, when they're not there. Yeah. There's neighbors. There's burn victims. There's everybody's in their house constantly. They <laughs> they don't close doors. They don't like what's how many times can they use that in one episode? Yeah, I it, it was I I I thought it was it was funny because it's not. Now, I mean, you, you see it in like the old shows, the old sitcoms and, you know, these people would show up and that trope would totally work. But nowadays, everyone is so private that 
it's like you don't just show up to people's houses like you get you shot if you do that. <laughs> <laughs> just or yeah. even, even just even just to knock and be like, hey, here's some cookies I I that are left over. Even that's like a little weird nowadays. Let alone just walking in, <laughs> walking into their houses. But I, I thought it was like they were. It was a fun. I thought it kind of worked because it's like this weird house with this weird history. And yeah. The neighborhood is weird, and I I thought you could kind of get away with it because of all that weirdness. Yeah, the first like, time, weird. but then like. If somebody freaks you out by walking into your new house and you're like, oh, my God, I'm super traumatized. That was scary. That was creepy. That was weird. It's not going to happen a second time. Okay, You put chains on the door. <laughs> yeah. You learn your lesson and you close the door and you lock the door. I would think. What about you, Muhammad? Or, no, they the locked the door and, and there was a secret way, supernatural way in that we don't know yet. Know. See, this Maybe. guy gets it. That would, be, that would be interesting, though. They didn't say that, like, at least the first time. I guess we only really heard the first time. When, but she said something like, you know, oh, you left the back door open. Which, you know, maybe she did, maybe she didn't. That was a little vague. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Neil, who was your favorite character? I have a question about one after that. <laughs> oh, uh, ooh, who is my favorite character? Uh, mm. Probably the the house cleaner. I said Moira. House. Uh, Moira, Moira, is the right? young yeah. version or the old version or the combination? Oh, both. both. Uh, you know, it's the same person. I, I, uh, the reason I like her is because it seems at first that she's something's up with her. That you know, maybe she's bad, but she also seemed to be in conflict with Constance, and maybe she might be trying to do mm. something good. Um, so I, I like that complexity I, i'm kind of interested to see how she evolves over the season love that line don't make me kill you again near the end between the two yeah of them. Like, oh that was an interesting line so is she yeah. a ghost and that would explain why she could be young and old is because she's not even a real person she's just a piglet of their imagination uh muhammad who's your favorite character I guess Vivian was the most sympathetic, so I guess her. But I mean, I didn't love any character in the show. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Vivian, you know. Did you have a specific least favorite character then? Uh, I mean, the one I the one I found most disturbing was Tate, the the the, the killer boy. Uh, that that was part of why I was like, I don't know that I want to keep watching this. I, you know, this is yeah, bothering Tate. me. Yeah, and, and you know, and then him, you know, him. It almost seems like maybe he is one of the ghosts because he he was somehow phasing with the ghost when they were beating up the bully. So yeah, I, I didn't love that. Yeah, maybe, I, and I call him Taint for fun, but maybe Taint is actually the young version of the old evil guy that's doing things down in the basement, just like Moira. There's the mm. young version, the old version, maybe taint is the young version and old version because have we actually seen tate like out at school or anything like that no right we just see him being theoretically part of the imagination of somebody that's in the house or whatever uh mm -hmm. and and he's totally cosplaying kurt cobain right i mean like that was the first thing i noticed was i was like dude this guy actually has the kurt cobain you know iconic oh, yeah. shirt yeah, from yeah. like the 90s and he even said when she said yo you want to listen to some music he said do you have any kurt cobain first of all i thought that was poor writing because you should have just said do you have any nirvana because there wasn't really any kurt cobain outside of nirvana but we'll leave that alone um so maybe that is the kid in the 90s you know like maybe maybe he is a ghost that died in the 90s and that's we never saw him outside the house at all did we and and that would explain why he just randomly shows up and he's like in a really, you know, she's about to whatever, she's cutting herself. And again, he's just there. I wondered about that too. Yeah. Uh, and why the so dad didn't like freak out. Like, how did you even meet my daughter? Like, where did you find my, you, what, what's going on? But I guess he's having his private practice in the house, right? Yeah. I, that could, okay. Then that, that would explain. But then yeah, I bet like, you he is a ghost then. I bet you he's, he's the ghost support. that's that old guy. Yeah. And that could be. I mean, that could be another reason why people are just showing up. Is is maybe they're just both spirit. Uh, that maybe that's why they're they're. I don't. I don't know. Maybe maybe people who know the show are like, you guys are way off. 
We did see Addie outside the house and younger, the the the, the girl with Downs. We did see her, but on the outside. premises, still it's true on the premises. It's true, yeah, it's still true. there. So I have a question um, about Moira since you mentioned Moira, um, Neil. So this is something that bugged me too. Like, so the guy, uh, what's his name, Ben, would see her as the young. The the Vivian would see her as old. We didn't really know anybody else, but I was wondering: is this something like is this gender specific or is it specific to Ben? I, I was I was curious. How like basically how broad that was because I guess there was the one scene where Violet saw um, the dad with with Moira. I don't know what she saw. Did she see a young version or older? I don't know. Or or other people in general. That was that was confusing to me. She, she saw. I think she saw the old version because okay. when she uh, the uh, the daughter right when she yeah. when she walks yeah, in the daughter she, saw the old version. The older yeah. Okay, version which was pretty funny. Um, yeah. Like, wow, dad. <laughs> and she's like, oh my God, this is even worse than I thought. <laughs> oh gosh, this poor sucker. She's I know, like, I guess if you're a kid, sucks. though, it's all they're all old. So maybe not you don't distinguish. I don't know. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. 30 or 30, 35. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, but I think what we're talking about right now, at least in my opinion, this is what makes the show good this is the good aspect of the show is that one was good the mystery like the fact that we're piecing together and theorizing what's going on like most of my nitpicks come with the delivery of what they did Mm -hmm. and the technical aspects but what i think is good is the fact that they're building up this mystery and we're trying to figure out we don't need to build up the mystery of is the house haunted we already know that what we are wondering is Who's real? Who's not? What's a figment of their imagination? You know what? What's what's the story behind it? Uh, but here's I kind of teased this earlier. But here's something I really did not like. I didn't hate it, but I thought it was not good. Was the camera work and editing? Hmm. Uh, they like you know I don't know if you guys noticed this, but like the camera would do like a quick zoom in or oh, like totally. a cut, or sometimes it would shake. And the totally. editing was going super quick sometimes when it didn't need it. In a moment that's not tense, they're still like doing this to the yeah. point where they were like during trying. The, during the psychiatry session that was doing that, yeah. I remember. They were trying to make, I guess, maybe things more interesting. But in my mind, it made the camera work and editing its own character within the show because we're seeing it through their eyes and they're influencing our perception of the show. And in a distracting way and so i actually thought of it 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 actually felt to me as if i was getting the personality of the editor or the director and i didn't want it because it didn't work for me and i thought that it actually distracted and took away from the show but neil as a filmmaker yourself i think you you look like you're disagreeing with me on this based on your reaction uh no, no, no. I mean, I, I think it was a specific choice. And, you know, it is I, I, I kind of watch it through the lens of a, you know, cable TV uh, show. And, I, you know, there's now that, you, you know, you, you got to keep people hooked for the commercials and everything and, and, you know, keep them on there. And so oftentimes you got to do things a little faster paced. Uh, so I, I thought that was a deliberate choice. I mean, I prefer different i prefer slow burning you know it seems like that maybe the show is going to be a little bit slow burning but yeah the the editing and the the camera and everything it it didn't have the feel of like a traditional say more slow burning show like 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 uh the haunting of hill house or or any of those shows which but those aren't also aren't on cable tv where you got to like keep people hooked you know, you're watching it on Netflix or something. So I, I kind of viewed it through the lens of that. And I I wasn't expecting more of a traditional like horror of like, let's just sit with these people and not be so aware of where the camera is and where we're, we're cutting. Um, yeah. So that it, was, yeah. It just felt immature to me, honestly. It felt like a first year, you know, film student that's trying to do something interesting and extra with the camera work that wasn't working it didn't feel seasoned it it felt like they were trying to do something that might work but that it was not working i don't know what do you think muhammad i mean that and that's just me again that's that's just this guy i'm sure the person doing this knows way more about everything than i do (laughs) i didn't notice it i mean i don't i don't know that i necessarily thought it was positive but i noticed especially during the session with um 
with uh, Ben and Tate. Yeah, and there was a couple of things where, he, especially when he was sort of fantasizing about murders and stuff like that, the the, the, the jumps in and stuff like that. Like, I, mean, I noticed it. I, I didn't. I thought it was interesting because I'm not used to seeing that, but it it didn't it didn't strike me as positive. It was just it was like, oh, that's different. Okay. Yeah, I think with the right scoring and the right acting and the right script, you don't need those bells and whistles. Like mm -hmm. it's tense just on one shot on that kid's face as he is just taking you for a ride of what's going on in his brain. Anyway, that was there were a lot of stereotype much. things in there too. There's a, there was a lot of the whole like, oh look, all the cupboards are open now. There's a lot of the, sort of the oh, okay. <laughs> That's pretty oh my much God. my only real qualm with it was was that that stuff. Oh, really? You guys have any other? Well, Muhammad told us his qualms. What about you, Neil? Did you have any qualms with the show? Uh, I, you know, I, I would say the one little thing that I I that maybe took me out a little bit was some of the the sound effects score. Uh, not not the music necessarily as a whole, but some of the like ring, 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 you know like the ring, some of those tremolos and things because i i mean i've used those in in you know some of my early stuff and i watch it now and i i cringe a little bit because it does sound like kind of old and dated uh so but this is an older show and and you know again i think you got to look at it through you know are, are they doing that nowadays in, in the seasons now i don't know but 10 years ago it was it was more more common um but yeah some of the sound stuff i think just it's a little bit dated i would say mm -hmm. for nowadays there was one song i really liked and and neil when you were talking about music i was wondering if it was them but it was when we see tate and violet in the room together for the first time but right before she makes they make the kurt cobain comment there was like some song playing and I was really enjoying I was like, wow, this is really nice. And then she goes on to the tape player or whatever and stops it. I was like, hey, it, yeah. I was enjoying uh, that. It would really set the mood. Whatever that was, I really liked that one. So I was kind of bummed that they did was that. was interesting because I didn't realize I was actually playing for them. I thought that was just like music right. associated with it. And then when she started, I was like, oh, that was actually there. Takes you out of it, yeah. But good, good delivery there, I thought. Anyway. Uh, speaking of good delivery, um, <laughs> Muhammad's like, oh, that, that kind of worked. Okay. <laughs> Neil, let's talk about you for a moment. You are a big uh, horror guy. You like to make some cool films. You're working on a lot of stuff. As a horror filmmaker, what, what has been like your biggest influence? Like what kind of planted that seed of wanting to do that kind of stuff? Oh. Um... Ooh, well, I would say there's there's been a few. Uh, I would say my earliest like thing that really uh, you could say affected me or really screwed me up or, or traumatized <laughs> me is uh, I remember being a kid, and I'm sorry, this is like an older movie. Maybe a lot of people have not seen this, but as a kid, I watched <laughs> this movie called The Haunting. Uh, from the 1960s i think it's 1960 and it's this black and white actually if you've seen the new tv show uh the haunting of hill house on netflix if you've seen that show the, it's based off of the same novel it's a shirley jackson novel and so uh, and, uh real quick wtf yeah. the haunting at Ooh. hill house yeah. Never heard of that one, but that will be perfect for this month. Uh, everybody, if you want us to review that one in the comments below, say WTF, Haunting at Hill House or of Hill House, something like that. Uh, yeah, haunting at, no, Haunting of, of Hill House. Okay, sorry, please uh, continue. But at the Haunting of Hill, yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah, so the original actually, uh, you know, and this might be a minor spoiler, but you don't actually see any of the horror in the movie there's no you don't see any monsters any ghosts anything supernatural i i had to re i rewatched it when i got older and i was shocked that there was nothing really there mm. and i think i as a kid i just created the most horrible imagining things in my in my head it, it, uh, you know it was like all, it was all in my head and i i remember being sick for days and i i could not go down in the cellar anymore for wow. years till i was uh you know my probably my 20s i could finally go down <laughs> in the basement wow uh 
You're like, I want to do this to others. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, that's the thing, you know, it's like you feel this like thing and it's like, well, you know, it's something, I don't know. It, it, people could look at that and be like, well, that's awful. Why would you want to relive that? <laughs> and, I, and I just think, well, that was my childhood. So in a way I'm reliving my childhood by doing this. I don't know. Uh, but I would say that is my earliest uh, influence. Um, I, I I made this movie uh, that Ryan produced called The Monster, which starts mm -hmm. off with a young a father reading a young boy, uh, an Edgar Allan Poe story. Like great actors, way, way, way yeah, great actors, uh, way too young to be hearing this awful horror story. And I remember uh, I was with my dad at one of our screenings, and after the screening, he goes, he goes, oh my god, what did I do to you? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? Wow. He's like, what? He's like that was me. And then you were the boy. And that I used to read you those stories. Like, what did I, what did I do to you? I was like, really? Like, yeah, I kind of forgotten about it. But apparently, he used to read me some, you know, some of the old fairy tales that were not the Disney versions. We'll just say that. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, you know, it was just weird. I made a movie about it, and I didn't even realize it. But so, yeah, my dad was probably influenced by reading me some messed up stuff when I was younger. Well, in fairness, old, okay. all of those fairy tales are f messed up. If you, when we revisit those, if you watch it, we're like, or or like the the songs that they sing. What are we like? The 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 French fairy tales. My mom used to read me as a kid, Conte de Fée. Like, what the crap? It's <laughs> about like vines that eat children, and then thorns and blood and guts. It's crazy. But we're like, oh, it's a little. You want to hear a fairy tale? Anyway, sorry, what were you uh, going to say, Mohammed? I was going to say, Neil, um, last week, our, uh, the special guest was Darsh Shui. And on IMDb, his most recent acting credit was as a zombie in When the Fever Breaks. And I was just looking at your IMDb. And as a matter of fact, the most recent actor credit is also as a zombie in When the Fever Breaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, is, that my, is that my last acting credit? <laughs> well, it's the most I, recent one I, that I see on here. It was made, yeah, it was made years ago, but I think it finally got released a couple of years ago. But yeah, yeah Ryan uh, said, hey, you want to be a zombie at this thing? And I said, yeah. And actually, my wife was also a zombie. Our good friend, Chris Gomez, I think, was also a zombie. Yes. Oh, my God. You're I right. I'd forgotten Chris, I about that. Me. He ate my, uh, well, no, uh, no spoilers. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, that was a fun time. We had to go, I went to zombie classes where I learned to, to be like a zombie and my wife didn't um she didn't know a lot of she knows now but she didn't she know a lot awesome. of zombie movies at the time so she and she's like what do i gotta do and I'm like you just like you know you gotta eat the brains and eat eat the liver and whatever eat it but she was like thinking i gotta eat it like an animal so i thought of how my cats eat it so she would like she was like licking licking it like a cat because somehow she thought that was how it so it's it's very she cute was great she was awesome you know just like kind of licking it like a cat zombie cat <laughs> that's amazing yeah uh well one final question about horror and the horror genre and, and everything that you do within that neil now today who's out there that you really admire or want to model your stuff after or that uh you think are the, the great minds uh, as far as filmmaking is concerned, that you want to emulate or do as well as? Great question. Ooh, oh yeah, I mean, yeah. There's there's a lot. Uh, I you know I really like Jordan Peele. I, I like how his movies often, you know, they're scary, they're cool, they're very cinematic. They have some interesting sort of thematics to them. Um, that I, I I like that if the, if you're able to kind of pull that off in a way that's. Uh, interesting and doesn't take you out of the movie but also kind of like layers in some interesting themes i always think that's effective because great horror is usually about what's going on in our world what's going on yeah. in our society how can we talk about these things without talking about them and just kind of like insinuating them through metaphor or whatever um so i would say jordan peele i, I really like ari oster if you've seen hereditary midsommar uh and he's got a new movie i think coming out soon hereditary is pretty badass uh if you've never seen well uh, you might Mohammed, 
if you thought this was a little bit uh, too gory for you, you, may, you might want to skip Hereditary. Disturbing. Not say gory, uh, but yeah, disturbing. Like, I shouldn't use the word gory. If this is too video. disturbing, then I, I would stay away from Hereditary. Nice. I'll check it out. But uh, yeah, you can check it out. Uh, I like Mike Flanagan, who did The Haunting of Hill House. I like his his uh, his style. Um, he's He's got some good stuff. John mm. Carpenter is classically one of my favorites. Oh, I love the Carpenters. Mm -hmm. yeah. Carpenter. <laughs> yeah. Good bands. Good bands. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Uh, let's move forward into the most important, second most important. This was the most important part, getting to know Neil a little better. I totally forgot you guys. Who was my favorite character oh, in yeah. this show? These little stinkers. Sorry, These guys fault. were perfect. These little rascals. They were just the right amount of dorky 70s, but maybe it took place in the 90s. I really couldn't tell. Uh, 78. 78 for that. 78. Well, then I don't understand. I feel like like the little girl that was Addie, Abby or Addie or something, it didn't, it seemed like she didn't she grow. She 40. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, I was trying to do the math and I was like, maybe it was the 90s. Because she oh does God, not yeah. seem, she does not seem like she would have been, you know, in her forties. Yeah, but wow, forgot about that. Anyway, yeah, that's weird. That's why it took me out of it because I was like, she went from like nine years old to like twenty <laughs> in thirty years or something. Anyway, um, it's time for the bottom line, everybody. Final two oh questions of the show. Everybody calls it the terrible twos. Muhammad's obsessed with calling line. it the bottom line. Neil bottom thinks line. it's the terrible twos. And <laughs> anyway, question number one is Muhammad, uh oh, on a scale of one to 10, what would you give this first episode of American Horror Story entitled Pilot? Again, not on an absolute basis, but on my personal, like, you know, what did I think of it and my assessment of it with respect to my taste? I'm going to give it a 5.5. Oh, we almost got our very first low score from Muhammad, but still not <laughs> quite. 5.5, uh, why? Yeah, why is it Why is it that high or why is that low? Low. Why is that low? I, I, again, I just found it really disturbing. I had a hard time getting through it. There were a lot. There were some aspects I didn't like. The biggest thing for me was just the disturbing aspect, which again, you know, I hate to do that in the sense that like it, it's coming with a chip against it. That's not its fault at all in the sense that it's not the kind of thing I would want to watch ever, even though I respect that other people do. That's the reason it's that low. The reason it's that high is I respected that there was, you know, a, a decent story. I, I actually did find myself curious about elements of it. Mm. What about you, Neil? Scale of one to ten. Uh, I, as you know, I'm not a big raider because uh, I, I, I have stuff out there and it gets rated, and I, I don't, I, I feel weird about rating things. So I just want to be clear about that because uh, <laughs> when your people are rating you, it doesn't feel great if they don't rate you high. So that being said, I I'll give it I'll give it an eight. I I thought it was well you know well well made well done. Uh, I thought it was interesting. Um, you know I don't think it scratches all the itches for me. Uh, but for like a cable TV show, it seemed like a quality product. Um, yeah, it's a you know maybe some of the sound effects and stuff are a little bit dated, but that, that I thought the acting was was good and. Uh, there's enough in it where, like, you know, you do kind of want to know how certain things, you know, who is in the gimp suit, like, and and who's this? Because it looked like a male gimp before, and now there's a female gimp. That's and lady, how many gimps know? are there? Is there a whole village of gimps? Uh, sure you know, out so. there we don't know about. Uh, and is, uh, they, and is the person in the plastic suit the father of the baby? <laughs> yeah, I thought of that too. Right. Yeah. Well, that's that seemed yeah that seemed like they were setting that up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I I kind of I kind of do want to know who the gimp was. Um, I hate the main character guy though. Oh. <laughs> the, the guy wasn't there. Dildo McDermott, yeah. Um, <laughs> what's his name? Oh Ben. ben. Uh, okay. So yeah, look, I'll tell you on a scale of one to ten, I'm I I agree with Neil. Like it felt very much like it's right around the eight uh area. I I. 
knocked it down a few. I dropped it down to a 7.7 because of the the camera work and editing that again, it felt immature to me. It felt like, and I mean it literally, like it felt like the style they're trying to do with that kind of stuff needs to mature. They need to, they need to perfect it. They need to hone that skill because at first it felt like they're trying to do something that's not quite working yet. And I feel like if they clean that up, they can still implement that style of camera work and editing, but get better at what they're trying to do. But um, 7.7, I think that this was more of a mystery than horror. And I found that 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 was its strongest suit was just it's building up these mysteries and these stories that makes you want to know what's going on. Uh, I also noticed that Neil has mentioned cable TV at least three times and in, in, in some kind of a negative light. Seems like there's something there. <laughs> Seems like he's he's kind of anti cable TV. So like you kind of slide in and you're like, yeah, for cable TV or there. <laughs> but, you know, so there's something there for sure. Anyway. Um, so that was question number one. Question number two is, for the purposes of this podcast, we all had to watch the first episode of American Horror Story on Hulu, I think originally on FX. But now that the podcast is over and we're free to move about the internet, Dr. Muhammad Noor, of your mm -hmm. own volition, would you watch the second episode? <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> like I said, I didn't want to finish the first one. I was struggling there to do it, but absolutely. And to be clear, it's not like I hate all horror things. I mean, I love... I love especially the ones that are so ridiculous that they're funny, like Shaun of the Dead. That's, I have that DVD I watch all the time. I think that's hilarious. I love it. But this, mm, no. <laughs> Maybe then. Uh, what about you, Neil? Would you watch the second episode of Your Own Volition? Um, yeah, as I said, I, I want to know who the, who, who the gimp, who's in the gimp suit. Uh, I want to know who's in the gimp suit. Uh, I want to know... Uh, you know, what's, what's going on? Why, why is the housekeeper, uh, why is she young and she's old? Or, or is she a ghost? Who, who is a ghost? Who's not a ghost? Who's real? Um, maybe another reason why the Addy girl, maybe, you know, she could be, a, maybe that's why she hasn't looked like she aged that. I, I don't know, but she did age somewhat. So, I, yeah. Um, there's a lot of like kind of things up in the air that I, I would probably watch to find out and. And it seems like it's a different thing every season. So you're not necessarily locked in for, oh, now I have to watch 50 episodes to find out what happened. I mean, you just got to watch one season, which actually on cable TV. Uh, it's gonna, no, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not bashing, you know, it's, just, it's got, you, there are certain standards and structures that you have to follow. It's, you know, it's, it's just normal for that. It's not, the Twilight Zone was on regular TV and it's one of the greatest shows in history, you know, you can make wonderful shows on TV, regular TV. But uh, yeah, there's usually like 20, sometimes 20 episodes. On, I don't know if this is one of those, but there might be a decent amount. Mm. But yes, that's my long winded way of saying, uh, I, I, yeah, there's enough th stuff there that I kind of want to know how it all, uh, you know, sorts itself out. You think it does sort itself out? Or you think it may, it just keeps building and then it just ends? Like, do we actually ever find out who's in the suit or is it just... I think <laughs> we'll find out by I would at the end of the season, right, Neil? What do you, you don't know who's, who's in the GIMP suit, uh, I'm going to be very disappointed. Mm -hmm. uh, so, everybody, you got it. Uh, Neil says he would watch the second episode, but they need to take that off of, you know, cable TV because he hates cable TV. <laughs> He's like, oh, just... No, no. Uh, and as for me, you know, I would watch the second episode. Uh, I, I didn't like the delivery of a lot of things and a lot of things didn't make sense to me. And I, and I think that the, some of the things that didn't make sense was not deliberate. You know, obviously they do make some things that don't make sense deliberately so that it piques your interest. But other things I was like, I don't, I thought it was just a little bit messy and it needs to be it needs to be cleaned up but i think the bones of what they had was an interesting story and you know i was initially thinking that the mystery would be solved or we would get the answer at the end of the episode but as the episode progressed and we got more and more and more nuggets and more building then you realize oh wait this is a season long thing we're not going to get any closure in this first episode but i would i would because they built up a good mystery and it piqued my interest and it definitely worked. So yeah, 
Good job. If you guys, guys. When you watch it, you can tell me the outcome, and I'll just know the outcome without having to be disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> well, All right, we'll everybody. For you. If you want us to review a show that is horror related in October in the comments below, just say WTF and that show. Give this video a like. Please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications. We'll like knock on your door. And by your door, I mean your phone and say, hey, we're going for it right now. And then you can click on your phone and watch the show that's coming up right now. Um, that was a long winded way of just saying hit the bell icon. Anyway, <laughs> so that's it for us. Thank you to Neil. Thank you to Muhammad. Thank you to Michael Kenyon Rosenberg. What I'm trying to say is this show was an American YouTube story. This show was, oh God. I, I, don't I know it comes up was. quick on us, doesn't it? It does come up quick on us. This show was creepiness laid out and defined. Uh, this show is about people in gimp suits. Yeah. Uh, sorry, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Uh, enjoy Horror Month. What a fun time. What I'm trying to say is don't forget what Michael Kenyon Rosenberg likes to say. Don't forget to become an organ, ah, organ donor. And don't forget to watch the first of things. Hey, Neil, freeze frame like we're, like we're uh, those twin kids. Smile.